Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lay down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You have walked through the valley of the shadow of death. I would fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Your pre you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head in oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in, our, in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a hand praise, hallelujah. It's a beautiful thing how it says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me every day of my life. And nowadays we live in times where mercy and goodness is short out there. But with here, right here with the people of God, that's what we crave, that's what we need, and that's what we give to each other. That's what we give to people. But it only comes if we choose to if we choose to make the Lord our shepherd. Hallelujah. If we say, you know, God, you are Lord above all things. You are the master, Lord. I want to be obedient to you. So let's go before the Lord in prayer. Let's bow our head. Let's raise our hands. Lord, dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, Jesus, because you are my shepherd, Lord Jesus, because you made this Sunday, Lord, for me to come to your house, Lord, to worship you, to praise you, Lord, and as such, Lord, I'm going to do it, Lord Jesus, because it's an awesome feeling, Lord, to wake up knowing that I have a Father, Lord, up above that woke me up this morning, that made me, that knew me before I was born, that knew me by my name, that knows all the hairs on my head and and knows me from the inside of my heart, Lord Jesus. I ask you, Lord, in this morning, Lord, to come into this heart, Lord. Come into our minds, Lord Jesus. Change us and transform us, Lord. Prepare us for your word, Lord Jesus. Lord, as we give you praise, as we give you honor, as we give you glory, Lord Jesus, let us be sincere, Lord Jesus. Let us, let us worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We ask you, Lord Jesus, as you are our shepherd, Lord, that you take us, Lord, from the valley to the mountain, Lord, from the from the waters, Lord, to the desert, Lord, but always with you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord Jesus, because you are never, have left us, nor forsake us, Lord. You always keep us, grab us by the hand and walk with us, Lord Jesus, Lord. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. We ask you, Lord, that you take over the service, Lord. Take over the music, Lord. But most importantly, take over my mind. Take over my heart, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Take over everything, Lord Jesus. Bless everybody who walks through this door, Jesus. Bless the musicians, Lord. Bless the pastor. Bless the teachers. Everybody that's in here, Lord Jesus. We ask you for your presence, Lord. In Jesus' name we praise, Lord. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, for this is not just any Sunday, Lord. But it's this Sunday, Lord, that I'm going to... That I'm going to worship you, Jesus. That I'm going to praise you, Lord, with all that I have. Because I have not given you my, my best praise yet, Lord. But today I will, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a hand clap? Can we praise him? Hallelujah.
up. Can you give him a praise? Hallelujah. If you give him your fear, he can turn it around. Hallelujah. Your fear doesn't stand a chance. Hallelujah. When God begins to move in your life. Hallelujah. Because fear begins to, to keep you where you're at. But God is saying, I can take you further. Give me your fear. Give me your pain. Give me your hurt. Oh, and I will turn it into joy. I will turn it into dancing. I will turn it into a stepping stone for you. Hallelujah. Give them your fear. Give them your problem. Hallelujah. And let God have his way in your life. Give them a hand clap. Give them a praise. Hallelujah. Jesus, we need you. We praise you. We love you. Hallelujah. 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 We cast out all fear, all doubt. Hallelujah. And Jesus reign in this place. Hallelujah. Let us everyone for being here with us this morning. It's awesome to have you guys. We appreciate you. If you could just take your seats for just a moment. We just have a few announcements here. Hallelujah. Uh, we do have our, our app. Uh, we ask that you download it. Even if you're just visiting, you just want to see our events that are going on. We, we try to keep it up to date. Well, I try to keep it up to date. I'm not always the greatest, but I try to keep it up to date. You can join. We see our small groups, uh, see the events we have going on and things like that. Uh, and if you have not joined one of our our, um, our first steps, we would love to have everyone join our first steps. If you haven't joined it, we're going to start it again next month. Uh, come out and you just learn a little bit more about the Word of God. You learn a little bit more about our church and how to join one of our teams or join one of our groups. We'd love to have everyone go through it. If you haven't joined it, we're going to be seeking you out soon. Not that, you know, don't be scared or anything. But I'm just going <laughs> to try to reach out to those who have not joined and you know who you are. Amen. But we just, it's all in fun. It's not, nothing bad. Hallelujah. We just want you to, to get involved. We want you to know what's going on and, and how to get involved. And, and we feel, and, and I know that if you have a purpose in your life, if, you, if you're purpose-driven, if you have a, a plan in your life, God is going to do something. If you can say, God, I, I, want, I want to do more for you, God, but I don't know what to do. Oh, we're here to help you do that. We're here to help you find your calling. Maybe it's not going to be the calling for the rest of your life, but it's a step in the, in the right direction. Because once you let God begin to move in your life. God can direct you in whichever way you need to go. Once you bring down your, your boundaries, once you bring down those chains that are binding you, God can begin to do something great that we cannot even think or fathom of doing. Amen. But we just got to surrender it all to God and, and let have him have his way. And we just want to help you do that. We just want to. So that's why we want everyone to join our, our first uh, first. Uh, First step, sorry. Amen. And then on Wednesday, we do have our Bible class. Uh, we will have our youth class, our adult class, and our junior class at 7 p.m. We want to encourage you to invite somebody and dig a little bit deeper into the Word of God. Amen. And then next Sunday, we will have our worship service. It is Mother's Day. For those who forgot, fathers, this is notice. <laughs> Get, go buy your gifts. Go buy your gift cards. Whatever it is that, you know, you were supposed to be listening for all the hints. <laughs> so try to try to find out this week what's going on. But we are going to have a, a worship service here. We're going to praise God, and then we can have time to, to celebrate with your mother after. Amen. We're just going to continue to praise the name of the Lord. Jumping forward on May 25th, uh, which is a Saturday, there is going to be a junior event. So all the juniors are going to be paid for. Uh, it is going to be a Fresno Zoo junior event. Uh, we, it's invite, It's open to everyone. Anyone can go that you that would like to join. The more, the merrier. We're just going to have a good time over there. Uh, the juniors will be taken care of, but everyone else, it's self-pay. Unfortunately, sorry, I apologize. Amen. But uh, if you need more information, please see uh, Brother Eli or Sister Kim. Uh, I think they're planning. We're trying to do some kind of picnic or something. I'm not sure exactly. I'm just out here talking. Amen. But please see them for more information. We're just going to have a good time. And then I think we have that Monday off. That's right before the holiday. So there's no no stress in, in that next Monday coming all tired. Amen. So please see them for more information. Amen. Praise God. Uh, if you're new here today, God bless you. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, for those who have, have come back after a while, God bless you. We're glad to see you in Jesus' name. Uh, let's, let's go to Psalm 46 and verse 8. How many are ready to get into the word of the Lord? Psalm 46 and verse 8. go to 
of verse 11. Psalm 46, verses 8 through 11. And it says, Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Selah means pause. It's a musical direction. Psalms are all songs. And so they would sing this. And the word selah means pause. It, 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 tells, it tells the reader, it tells the singer to just rest. And folks, in this world today where there's so much going on, where there's wars and rumors of wars, where we've just come out of a major pestilence over the last year, where there's strife and, and this country is being torn apart, folks. Where there's all this division and there's unrest and there's pain in our families. You know, if you listen to some people, the economy's doing great. But then why am I so worried about the prices? All the moms better say something. Amen. You're the, you're the ones going out, buying all this food. And men, we're the ones going, what? what? If it wasn't so difficult, if it wasn't so if it wasn't so car if it wasn't so if it didn't shake the foundations of our homes and our own mental health it would be comical but instead it worries us and so i look to the psalms to figure out what god would have me do because therein I find my peace. Therein I find out God's direction. Therein I find my purpose with Him. Is there anybody who's excited by that? I said, is there anybody excited by that? To find your peace and your purpose in Him. Let's bow our heads. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you, God. And we ask you, Lord, that you would help us, Jesus. Lord God, that you would help us to trust you. Lord, that we might navigate our way through this world. And Lord, we might provide someone else with a guide. And Lord, that they would find you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Please be seated. Um, I think... I, I think sometimes we need to ask each other, what is the greatest thing that we have learned in our time in walking with the Lord? Um, and I think it's important because therein we can, we can really learn something from, from each other. Amen? Amen? We see each other as we are. We see each other as polished. We see each other as having it together. Or, or uh, I don't know what we see, but we see something more now than what we were. Amen. And something that has changed me into what I am is, uh, is an incident, or it's really it's a, a process I went through probably about 15 or 16 years ago. And I don't know if you remember back in that time, but... The, the economy was even crazier than it is now. We were having people's houses getting taken from them. Uh, we were having people not able to pay their, their mortgage because what had been interest only on homes all of a sudden now included principal and they owed more now or they owed more then than when they had started out. 
And so it's a, it was a difficult time. And uh, in 2009, I ended up at this job in Pleasanton. And uh, this came after about seven or eight years of having a really difficult time uh, trying to keep ends together. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. And so there I was at this job, and there was this guy from Belgium. And this guy had the worst attitude of anybody I ever met. And he was not my boss, but he was my boss's boss. And he wasn't the boss of everything. He was under a couple of layers of management. But I don't know what happened with this guy, how he got in this position. But he was in a position, uh, he was like a pit bull set loose in the company. And he would come in and he would start yelling at people. Come on. You think it's all nice in the office. It ain't. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That doesn't just happen on the road cruise. That doesn't just happen with the, with the police and fire. Amen. The, this guy was a terrorist. And he, he, had, he, he would come in. And he would upset everybody. Where is this? And nothing was ever good. Why isn't this fixed? Why isn't this done? Why isn't, where are we going next week? And it was a cat and mouse game because as soon as you satisfied him on the stuff that he was yelling at you for a couple of days ago, he had something new to yell at you. In other words, his way of managing things, his way of getting things done was to basically terrorize people. Now, the thing is, man to man, and I'm trying not to be ego, uh, have ego about this, but man to man, he didn't intimidate me. He didn't intimidate me. But after all of that time of, of not working or of just making it, come on, somebody, he had me worried about something deeper. He had me worried about my job. He had me worried so bad uh, about making the payment on my house and having four children. Come on, somebody. Hey, Amen. When you got four kids, all of a sudden, it, it gets real. It gets real. And so he had me worried on that level. And everybody remember, he was in Pleasanton, right? There was no remote working at the time. And so there I was every morning. I was getting up at 4.30 so that I could be there at 6.30 to get in early, to start early so I could get everything done. And the problem is, is getting up at 4.30, you got to go to bed at 9 o'clock. But when you go to bed at 9 o'clock, And at 1 a.m., all of a sudden, you're not resting. And you get tired. But yet you get so tired and you're still worried. And because you're tired, you can't, because you're worried, you can't get to sleep. Is anybody seeing what I'm, what I'm talking about right now? And, and it got so bad. It got so bad, it was ending up hurting my stomach. And folks, I had to figure something out. I realized that Jesus is my provider. Amen. Well, thank you for speaking up now. But at the time, I was, I, I, I kind of, all of a sudden, it was a theory. Come on, it was a theory. And I had to figure out what I was going to do. And finally, let me get to the end of the story. The end of the story was this. That as I went to sleep, I decided to pray my way into the Lord's rest. Because it didn't matter what I thought. Physically, I, was, I, I could sleep sometimes. Amen. But the problem was, is my spirit wouldn't rest. And so I decided uh, as I lay down in bed that I would pray 
and, and, and I would first read a psalm. And as I read this psalm, I would put it into my soul. And as I prayed, I would talk to God and I would repeat the words of the psalm and I would get into them and I would meditate on God's word. And what I found out was is that as soon as I laid down and I began to speak God's word in prayer, I would begin to say, Lord, you're, you're, you're my provider. Lord, you're my sustainer. And then I would drift over and go, okay, well, if I go to the meeting tomorrow and I say this and, and I, don't, I, I would begin to take the problem back. Are you seeing what I was doing? I would start in God's word, but then I would take the problem back and begin to work on it. And then I would say no, and I would push it back and I would say, Lord, I give it back to you. And it almost became, became a tug of war where I would give God my problem and then I would let him work on it for a while and then I would take it back from him and then I would have to push it back. Folks, it was an act of the will to say, God, I need you to bless me. I need you to give me peace. I need you to work on my problems. Is anybody hearing what I'm talking about today? And folks, it took me more than a month. It took me more than a month to learn how to give God my problems and have him work on them and say, Lord, I'm going to be still and I'm going to wait on you. Come on. And, and, and after a while, after a month or so, I began to get rest for my soul. And as I got rest for my soul, I could feel God working on things. I could feel, amen, his influence. I could see him working in my life. Folks, we need God to work on our problems. We need to give him our problems. Hallelujah. We need to learn to trust God. And that's why I call this message, Be Still. Because we need to learn to be still. We need to bring things into focus through the lens of how God sees things. Amen. We've got to crucify the flesh. We've got to say, flesh, you're not going to fix that. God's going to fix it. Uh, hey, come on, somebody. I, I can't do everything. We've got to turn to the supernatural. Because if we don't turn to the supernatural, we, we, we confine ourselves. I couldn't change the way that man did his work. You're not going to be able to change your wife or your husband. You're not going to be able to, to change the way your parents think. Come on, somebody. You're not going to be able to outrun your fears unless you give God the problem. We need to learn to be still. Hallelujah. And I think it's one of the hardest things that we as Christians do is to sit and wait. To sit and wait. Not moving. Not griping, not fretting, not worrying, not being anxious, but just sitting still and saying nothing, trusting God. It's really interesting, and, and, and hear my heart when I say this, but I think it's really interesting that a lot of times when I give counsel, when people ask me for counsel, and I sit with them and I talk with them, uh, a lot of times people, I, I'm... I'm giving something out of God's word, how God would have us to do things. Somebody say amen. amen. And while I'm talking, I can see they're, they're, they're ready to say, yeah, but. Come on, parents. When you talk to your kids and you say something and they're going, yeah, but. but and, and I'm telling you, we have to learn to say, Lord, I will be still. And I'm not talking about sitting in front of the TV, not doing anything, or just being still when you're asleep. I, I'm, I'm talking about 
I'm talking about giving God your issue and saying, Lord, I need you to work on this. I've run out of options. I've run out of resources. I've run out of time. Hallelujah. I need you. We got to realize we're, we're commanded to be still for a reason because until we learn how to be still, we're always going to struggle trusting God. Are you hearing me? Until we are still, we're always going to have a struggle trusting God. And we're always going to have a hard time walking by faith. Amen. I kind of think about it like, like when you're a little kid. Remember your parent? They'd say, come on, come with me. And they would grab your hand and you're, you're like this. Right? Or parents. You're, you're trying to drag your, you're both going to the same direction. But they're pulling in this, they're this way and that. And, and I'm not belittling anybody. I'm just trying to draw a picture that God has a destination for each one of us. That God has a, has a perfect plan for us. And so often we're so busy pointing out the lions and the tigers over here and there. And, and the parents trying to take us to where the monkeys are, praise the Lord. Trying to take us to the good place. And we're just fighting it every step of the way. If, if, if we learn to walk by faith, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, walk by faith and not by sight. Walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. If we learn to be still, we can let God feed us. We can let God nurture us. Amen. It's only when we shut down and we're quiet and sit down that we can begin to see God at work. Can somebody say amen? amen. You know, Elijah, the prophet, uh, pro the prophet Elijah, he, uh, he came off of his greatest victory. He was, on Mount, um, he was on Mount Carmel. And on Mount Carmel, there were 400 pagan priests of Baal. He, they were in a contest. And each of them put together a, a pile of wood, a sacrifice, if you would, a sacrificial fire. And then they placed a, 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 a cow on top. And it was a sacrifice unto the gods. Amen. The Baal had them. They were going to sacrifice theirs. And, and, and uh, Elijah was going to sacrifice his unto the true God. And, and Elijah said, hey, call on your gods. See if they'll light it up. See if they'll take it. And, and there they were. The, the, the priests of Baal, they were, they were calling on their God. They were cutting themselves. And blood was everywhere. And, and nothing happened. And what did Elijah do? He called on the God of Israel. He called on the one true God. And that God answered by fire. And when he answered by fire, he took up that whole pile of the pagans. And then he went on, then he went on Elijah's pile. God always shows himself available. God always shows himself strong. Hallelujah. And so after this big victory, what does he do? He goes and he, and he kills all the priests of Baal. And it shows up the queen, Queen Jezebel and, and King Ahab. And the fight got tough. And so he, 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 he runs off after this great victory. And he runs off. And he runs off to the brook Jabbok. And he begins to feel sorry for himself. But he calls on God. And all of a sudden there's a big wind. Come on somebody. And, and the Bible says that the wind was so strong that the rocks began to break. Can you imagine a wind so strong that rocks are beginning to break. And the Bible says that the Lord passed by. And then all of a sudden, there was earthquakes. And Elijah looked for them in those two places, looked for God in those two things. He was searching for God. He said, oh, all this stuff. And isn't that true what we do? We wait for God. 
amen, to crack the sky with lightning. We, we ask God to bring us a big check. Come on, somebody. He, we ask God to, to fix everything yesterday. We were looking for the big thing. And he couldn't find God in that. And then all of a sudden, there was a still, small voice. But he, and that's where he found God. He found God not in the wind, not in the earthquake, not in the fire, hallelujah. But he found him in a still, small voice. But you cannot hear the still, small voice unless you yourself, hallelujah. He's in the stillness of the stillness of our rest. Yes, Folks, I'm trying to help you because we've got some serious things in our life that we need. We need knees replaced. We need hips fixed. We need infertility fixed. We need to talk about some of the big things and say, God, I need you to fix them. Lord, I want to just be a pastor. I don't want to have a regular job. Amen. I got to talk to God about that. I got to listen for him. Praise God. I want India to be saved. I want people getting repenting and being Baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And there was God in the stillness. Amen. Notice, God never panics. God never panics. He doesn't have to be in the midst of those big things. He's, he's always at rest. He's not panicking. And that's where we'll find him. And the point is, we have to walk by faith and not by sight. I want to go back to Psalms 46 and verse 10. And I think that's where we're going to find the template. Let's go back to that. I want you to notice first, there's the command. What is it? It's to be still. Be still. It means stop moving. Come on, somebody. Stop moving. Be quiet. Be at rest. Calm down. Hey, praise the Lord. Have greater peace than the circumstances around you. Stop being in control, somebody. I was talking with somebody a few weeks ago. And I, and I would say, well, why don't you do this? Oh, but I can't. Well, okay, well then what about this and that and one? No, I can't do that. Always being in control of the circumstances. Come on, somebody. Amen. Why don't we just be still? And, and I don't mean just like, like going to sleep. Uh, I'm going to hit somebody where they live right now. Amen. Depression. Depression. Have you ever noticed in depression that you go to sleep, but you don't rest? Come on, somebody. Can't just have been me. Praise God. The, the body will seem to rest, but the spirit won't receive any refreshment. Amen. You got to stop everything and you got to put it in God's hands. Hallelujah. You got to put it in his hands. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 6 says this. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 6 says this. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Folks, part of it is we got to humble ourselves. We got to humble ourselves. Amen. You, you can't believe how many CEOs we got in here. Oh, I, I know exactly how this ship should be run. We got so many captains of boats and captains of industry in here. Folks, how about if we just humble ourselves, amen, under the mighty hand of God? How about if we just be still, hallelujah? Hallelujah. It's a command. 
It's just as important as when Jesus said, love your neighbor, honor your mother and father, do good to them that hate you. Hallelujah. It's the opposite, amen, of when we're restless, upset, and frantic. We've got to just be still and say, Lord, I'm leaving it up to you. And it's something that we all have to do. Isn't it funny how life has a, is, is a conspiracy of busyness? It's a conspiracy of busyness. Busy, busy, busy. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. And, and you wonder why. Amen. Somebody, you, you're taking those Prozac or whatever those other things are. And it deadens your feelings. And so you can get and you can do some other things that sublimate your fears and your stress. Come on. I'm not trying to call names. I'm trying to tell you that if you don't rest in God, that these things will deaden you. And when you stop taking them, it's going to boomerang back on you. Because you haven't learned how to be still and rest in God. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying today? It doesn't mean that we don't care, but it means that we don't worry. We say, Lord, I'm really giving it to you. And you know what? It, it, think about what I was trying to tell you. There I am laying in bed, one o'clock in the morning, and I'm reciting Psalms. Come on, somebody. I am reciting Psalms word for word, and I'm just talking. And all of a sudden, I just start taking my problems back from God. I wasn't being still. I was, I was trying to get things done. And isn't that the way we're wired? All the Americans say amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's in our culture. It's in our nature. Amen. Todos los mexicanos digan amen. Porque es lo mismo con ustedes. Do something. Don't just sit there. Pour concrete. Amen. I say that in love. Amen. But we got to do something. Amen. But the Lord says be still. It means that we ignore the demands of this world. Because sometimes we just can't keep up. Can somebody say amen? amen. Second thing, going back to, to verse 10. Notice it says, be still. That's the command. And no, that's the opportunity. Everybody say opportunity. It's the opportunity to know God. And that's the greatest challenge of our life. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 23 says this. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Nor the rich man, or not, nor the mighty man glory in his might, nor the rich man in his riches. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord. God says that's the greatest thing to glory in, that you would know him. And when you stop and you're still, it gives you a chance to see him work. It gives you a chance to hear his voice. And then the word of God is going to come back to you. And you're going to know that it's wisdom from God because it's from his word. And it's what you've studied. And it comes right into your problem right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know, there's a simplicity in God. I said there's a simplicity in God. Remember, I told you, do this and do that. No, I can't do that. Do you know why we have those answers? Because we've complicated everything. We've made everything so complex, but God says my word is simple. It's deep, but it's simple. And if you get into it, you're going to hear my heart. You're going to hear my voice. You're going to see my hands work in your life. Hallelujah. He's there in the word, and he's waiting for you and me. And he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls 
We need to find rest unto our souls. Part of me wishes that this was just theory for you. That it was just theory. But folks, I had to learn this the hard way. Come on. And I, I, I see this in the word and I see how he directed me, how he changed me, how he brought peace into my soul. And I say, Lord, I'm thankful now. Come on, somebody. When you're on the other side of the problem, you're thankful and you can see God's hand work. But if we're fighting the whole time, we're like the little kid. You end up at the monkey cage and you're in tears because you didn't get to see the zebras. Come on, it's true. It's true. We need to, we need to go where God wants to take us. And when we do, we'll, be, we'll have some, some peace about it. And, and think about what you're being invited to know. When you're still, when you're obedient to what God says, to be still and to watch him, you're being invited to know the mind of God. You're being invited to know his thoughts and his plans. You're, you're being invited to know his abilities. Jeremiah 32, 17 says, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by that great power and stretched out arm that there is nothing too hard for thee. We're all going to get to the same destination in one way or another. But the question is, are we struggling on our own or are we allowing God to take us along? Are we allowing ourselves to see what God can do? He's inviting us to know his will. He's inviting us to know the fear of God. He's inviting us to know the love of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians 3.19 says, And to know the love of Christ, which surpasses all understanding. That's your God. If you take him as your God. Come on, somebody. If you take him as your God. It's your choice. And if you leave him behind... God is not going to drag you. He's going to call you. He's going to call you until one day then the calling stops. And I don't know when that is. For some people, it's death. For others, it's, it's, it's a life of misery. Come on, somebody. I don't want to be 70 years old living in some three-story walk-up in, in the Lower East Side of New York City. A cold water flat, nothing in the house but but roaches and mice, and, and I, I tell you, it's it's a vision I have. Amen. It, it's it's like the worst thing I can think of. I, I know there's worse things, but I know that God has something different for me. That God has a reasonable end for me. Hallelujah! And it's going to end in His glory. Hallelujah. He's inviting us to know the rest in him. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4.13 that there's three kinds of rest. There's physical rest. And that's usually what we do in depression, right? We, we just want to get our bodies rested. And there, there's physical rest. And there's emotional rest. No worries or, or pressure or trouble. But then God says that there's a spiritual rest. He says that though our outward man perish, because sometimes we don't get exactly what we want. Somebody say amen. amen. We don't get exactly what we want. And he says, though the outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. He is going to nourish our inner man day by day. The Bible says in Proverbs 17 and 1, it says, better is a dry morsel therewith in quietness than a house full of sacrifices and strife. Whew. Better is a dry morsel in quietness therewith than a house full of sacrifices with strife. Have you been to a big house, somebody's big house? I've been to some houses that were huge. 
and they were filled with furniture, but they were empty. Come on, somebody. I've been to some beautiful houses and the ugliness that's within. The lack of peace. Folks, we're chasing the wrong thing. I love my country, but we're too worried about things. or We're too worried about stuff. Uh, we're too worried about big TVs and expensive cars and fancy holidays. Hallelujah. But those things cannot, those things cannot compare to having peace and quiet and rest in my soul. Hallelujah. Two people too many people give up seeking that rest with God and try and go get the stuff. Let me, let me explain that. It's that they can't find that rest with God. They don't pursue it. They give up after a few nights of praying and they quit giving God the, the burden. Come on, somebody. And they say, fine. That's, that's the way it's going to be? All right. And so they go after more stuff. How many know that if you go after something, you can get it? And so they get more stuff and they get more stuff. And the spiritual problems sit in there and rot. And then they start taking alcohol to deaden the pain. Come on, somebody. Or, or they start smoking pot or taking drugs to get into a, into a higher state. Hallelujah. Because the misery of this plane is too much. I want you to know that God has a solution for those things. And we need to rest. Hallelujah. And we need to know that God is God hallelujah so that brings us to the third and final thing first be obedient right be obedient it's a command be still and then it's to know God and then the third thing is to surrender oh come on somebody we gotta surrender Amen. You know, the God of Islam, surrender it all to him. Amen. That, that's, not a, that's not a peaceful surrender. That surrender is going to cut your head off. It, it's a surrender or we're going we're gonna to create a problem for you. No, our God is different. Our God is a God that says, come on, give it to me. I'll take on your fight. Hallelujah. But understand that this is a fight over who's in charge. Come on, somebody. It's a fight over who's in charge. Either your flesh, your fears, your feelings, or your friends, or God Almighty. Come on, hallelujah. You got to figure it out. It's a battle. It's a wrestling match with your flesh. And it's automatically and, and naturally going to want to be in charge. But if you allow God to take over, if you surrender, hallelujah, God is going to speak. God is who he is. You are not God. God is who he is. I am not God. God is who he is. Your, God, your boss is not God. Hallelujah. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, the Bible tells us that the people of Israel, they, they, had tried to, they had tried to fit everything in their schedule. They had tried to get into the land, uh, the, 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 the promised land. They tried to get into the promised land. They wanted the Anakims and, and all of the, the, the people of Anathoth. And all the, they wanted all those tall, mighty people gone. And so they rejected God's command to move forward. But God had them wander around in the desert for 40 years. And once they were done wandering around, God said, listen, you need to let me be God. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 35 that thou mightest know that the Lord, he is God and there is none be else beside him. Verse 39 goes on to say, know therefore this day and consider it in thine heart that the Lord, he is God in heaven above and upon the earth beneath. There is none else. I'm so glad I have a God who's greater than me. 
I'm so glad I have a God who's mightier than me. Why? Because I know my limitations. And when I give it up to him, come on, somebody. When I give God control and let him be God, his hand is mighty. Isaiah 45, he says, I am the Lord. There is none else and there is no God beside me. Isaiah 45 and verse 22, look look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. Folks, we're in some massive project to save ourselves and we cannot do it. No amount of education is going to get us out of the problems we're in. It might get us a nicer house and praise the Lord. He makes a way for that. But it's not going to give us the peace. You know, you know why I, I can't stand Hollywood most of all? Aside from all the filthiness it puts on the screens and, and like sheep people... They get their Netflix and they go for it. Do you know what bothers me the most? It sells a false reality. It sells a false reality that you and I can fix whatever we want. And whether it's a half an hour on a TV show or an hour or two hours at the movie, what happens in the end? Everything's okay. Come on, isn't that true? I, I know most of you, you haven't, been to a, you haven't been to a movie in 30 years. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. But listen, you've got to start submitting to that truth that he is God. Come on, somebody. He is God. You know, when we get baptized, what happens? God begins to take a lot of stuff off our table. Come on. He takes a lot of burdens off of us. But then it starts to get to the hard stuff. The devil sits up and takes notice and starts taking advantage of our life. Starts taking advantage of people around us and hurting us and stressing us out. Now that's when we've got to listen to God and let him be God. Come on, somebody. We've got to let him take over. Amen. We've... we. We don't know what's going to happen in the future, but we've got to let him be God. You know, in the book of Job, Job understood his issues. He understood partially, if you will. He understood a little bit of why he was in the state that he was in. And it says in Job chapter 3 and verse 26, it, it talks about all the problems that happen. And he said he didn't know what was going on in the future, but he said, yet trouble came. He did all the sacrifices right. He sacrificed for his children. He he stepped out for them. But what happened? Yet trouble came. And folks, that's where we've got to let God be God. We can't program, pre-program everything in life. And it happens that there are troubles. But if we depend on God, and if we say, Lee, my God, hallelujah, I will will depend on you. I will trust you. That's a life of faith. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand praise. There's never going to be a time where there's no pressure. There's never going to be a time where there's no dangers or or unexpected problems. Troubles always come. And you know, I remember, I remember what a beautiful day it was when our, when our daughter, uh, Rachel and our daughter, Lydia got in this terrible accident and there I was at work and I get a call and saying, you got to go to the hospital. There's a, been a terrible accident. And the things I saw that day, I could not be prepared for. No one could be prepared for those things. You know, my dad uh, was in Vietnam, and he saw some things that were, mm, come on, somebody. But when I saw what my daughter looked like, I turned to the nurses and I said, do not let those people see what's going on in here. And they looked at me and they went, yeah. 
Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? You cannot be prepared for everything. But if you let God be God, he will carry you through everything. He will carry you through things. You will see the good side. Come on, somebody. You're going to see a good result. Hallelujah. The people of Israel, they had such an issue. They were free. They had gotten out of Egypt. Everything was working for them. Amen. The path was getting rougher. And, and, and then all of a sudden, they come to the Red Sea. Let's stand to our feet. Let's stand to our feet. Let's go to Exodus chapter 14 and verse 13. I want you to see what God is trying to tell us to do. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 13. Can we bring it up? Notice what it says. And Moses said unto the people, fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. Hallelujah, somebody. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. They had the option right there. What are you going to do in your life today? Because you brought problems into this place. Somebody say amen. You brought challenges into this place. Say amen. amen. So what are you going to do? The Lord says, stand still. Stop everything. Just for a little bit. Get somewhere. Rest. Pray. Talk to God. And cry out to him. And say, Lord, I need you. Hallelujah. Go to verse 14. Go to verse 14. Notice what it said. The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. You need to be in awe of God. Come on, somebody. You need to be in awe of God and not your problems. You need to know that God is greater than your problems. He's greater than your needs. He's greater than your hearts. He's greater than your wounds, hallelujah. That he's a healer, that he's a saver, hallelujah. Can you do that? Be still and know that he is God. Can we get in awe of God this morning? God is waiting for us today, right now. He's waiting for us to trust in him. He's waiting for us to submit to him. Not because he wants to dominate us, but he wants to love us like a father. How many, it, 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 part of our problem in this country is we have families so split up and some kids don't know the love of a father. The love of the father, you have to submit to, to the fathers. a blessing in submitting sometimes we don't want to submit to fathers but they love us they want to keep us they want to cherish us they want us to do better than they did but if we never give God the opportunity to be God we'll never rejoice seeing his hand folks this altar is open right now I think one of the hardest jobs we have to do as Christians is wait on God. But I wonder if somebody might want to come up here and say, Lord, I'm ready to wait on you. I'm ready to get my peace in you. And I want to come here and just wait on you and just say, Lord, I'm ready to be still. I'm ready, Lord, to let you take over. I'm going to follow the command. I'm going to be still in your presence. Come on, somebody. Don't wait for, the, for someone else to come. Let the, don't wait for the, the dam to break, but just come forward and say, Lord, I'm here by obedience. I'm going to follow your command. 
I'm going to get to know you, Jesus. I'm going to listen for that still, small voice. Uh, and I'm waiting for you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, somebody. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 